I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm a you know me, Phil. I'm a hard scorer, a hard marker. I have high expectations. Oh, you're hard. And I love a documentary. You know that I love a queer documentary. Nothing makes me happier, but it does make me quite a hard marker when it comes to these kind of things. Tumor in Tennessee is up for review today. It's a new documentary. Sean has seen it. He's here. Sean Vickers, the man from Unflopped, Unpacked, Flip Flop, Boys on Film. How much more can you cram into your life? I don't know. If there's space on my Twitter bio, <laughs> I can probably do more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're missing something. <laughs> I, I stick someone else on there. Anyone else want to do a project? Give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> talking of Unpacked and Flip Flop, we got second season for both of those web series yeah, which are coming soon we have special the ryan o'connell show which we're very much looking forward to unpacking like we did with it's a sin and we have an amazing season coming up for flip flop with gail porter uh, how much do we love her we mega love her we super I mean, too mega much love gail. too much to fit into so the lots screen. of things coming up lots of season twos coming yeah. up very exciting so Truman in Tennessee, you've seen this. I haven't seen this. Tell us about this, Sean. Okay, so Truman in Tennessee, an intimate conversation. How intimate are we going? It's not that intimate. It's kind of intimate. Um, and we'll get into that, I guess. It really talks about two cornerstones of American literature, global literature to some extent, Truman Capote and Tennessee Williams. It's a documentary that talks about who they were, how they existed, why they existed, their interactions, to some extent, their rivalries. It tries to play on their similarities and their differences and their foibles. It, it's a, it's an interesting format. We've seen to little bit, Phil, um, with um, P.S. Burn This Letter, Please. Oh, yes, so you know the style that. of that film, which was directed by Michael Siegelman and Jenny Teixeira, which we reviewed for Flair. That idea that you're, it's a composite of clips and graphics and visuals and words so um we we saw it a bit in in that movie and it's a similar vibe so you get to see the legendary um david frost and there's some good stuff where he's interviewing they're not at the same time but they've cleverly taken an interview with truman an interview with tennessee and they kind of show them slightly back to back because um, David Frost's style and questioning is similar, not the same. And so you start to get a sense of it. And you get a sense of their lives, really. I think what's amazing is they had um, Zachary Kinto um, be the voice of Tennessee Williams as a voiceover. And they had Jim Parsons be the voiceover for Truman Capote. So you have these familiar queer voices also overlaid to it. So uh, all the components are there. And yeah, it, it really just it takes a, a moment of their life, a, a part of their life, and talks about who they were... Uh, how they approach life, their sex lives. It's interesting, um, Deadline called this film sympathetic and nicely shaped, and I think that's fair. It kind of washes over you. I think it could have gone deeper at times. Um, I was just going to say, could... yeah, I was going to ask you if, if if it does go deep, because people that know these two already, does it does it give them something? Does it deliver something that they wouldn't necessarily have found out before? I don't know, Phil. I don't know. I found it intriguing and there was things I didn't know about them and that came through in the documentary, which is always what you want in that kind of thing. You get kind of their parallel lives and a sense of struggle, different struggle on both their sides. And that struggle can either be self-doubt or creativity or addiction. Um, and to some extent, their success, you know, um, and that comes through. I it, There are parallels, but I'm not sure if there's enough points where they cross and touch and i think it needs a bit more of that uh in my mind because it's it's got the contrast and a bit of the compare but i actually want to have that overlap i want to get into the mix of like you know these two big i say cornerstone um literary icons queer icons how does that work together and i think it dances around it and i say sympathetic i think is a really good word um i i feel it could have gone deeper and um, I think they could have worked. It's hard because they're using historic footage, but there's something more. Because you have Jim Parsons and Zachary Quinto, you could have done something quite clever, I think. You touched on the contrast, because obviously they had that friendship, but the rivalry as well. Did, uh, presumably it, it focused on both of both of that and those struggles. But, yeah. you, but, but I guess you didn't really have any many questions answered. Well, I, I just think the film is called Truman and Tennessee an intimate conversation. And at some point, I think I want that conversation. I d and you don't get it. Uh. <laughs> you get, 
you, you're left to some of piece together that intimate conversation with all of the data that they give you and all of the references that they give you. But maybe it's too literal. Maybe the title's too literal, or maybe I want something more literal. But I, there's a point where I want all of it to converge. I want these two powerhouses to converge, and maybe that was my expectation. That I don't know whether you really get that. We'll, we'll, we'll go for the quote. Doesn't do what it says on the tin. Kind of. Yeah. Um, kind of does what it says on the tin, uh, but not. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I'm a. You know me, Phil. I'm a hard scorer, a hard marker. I have high expectations. Oh, you're hard. And I love a documentary. You know that I love a queer documentary. Nothing makes me happier. But it does make me quite a hard marker when it comes to these kind of things. Oh, it sounds like a lukewarm reaction. I think that's fair. It's a nice Sunday movie. That's how I'm <laughs> going to phrase it. I'm not saying it's horrible. I think it's a nice Sunday movie. Sit with a cup of tea, watch it. You'll enjoy it. Personally, something like P.S. Burn This Letter, Please, which oh, be one of the best flawless. documentaries I've seen in the last two years. Oh, it was amazing. But yeah. these with the same tools and devices and media for a very different outcome. You talk about intimacy, you think about P.S. Burn This Letter, Please. You, you're almost sobbing at the end of it when you when the, the reveal is and that intimacy, that conversation that I want here, I don't get it. I, I find out a bit more about two queer icons, but I don't get the, I don't get the meld, the join, and that's what I wanted. Fair enough. So we gave P.S. Burn This Letter Please five stars. Five stars. Guessing yeah. this is going to be a little bit lower. I'm not giving this five stars. I'm probably going to give this two stars. You've got to work hard to get five star from Sean Vickers. It, um, I mean, you, no one barely gets it. I mean, <laughs> but that's why I referenced that film. Like, it was it got five stars. This film, it's it's lovely and ticks along. I think that it, there's a lot of a lot more it could have given. Do documentaries are subjective. That's how I feel. So it's a two star for me. There we go. Truman and Tennessee. It is available now on all digital platforms. I think all of them. Let me know if it's not. Most Don't quote me. Don't sue me. <laughs> don't, don't at Phil. He might have missed the platform. <laughs> don't at me. <laughs> it's good to have you always watching us and supporting us. If you haven't subscribed already, please do, because we've got so much coming. Unpacked, flip flop, boys on film, more, more reviews, more. You want more? We deliver, hopefully. More, more, more. Yeah. See you next time. Good to see you, Sean. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.